Hello, everybody. We're here in Entre Amigos. Uh, I'm here from New York. It's raining today, but Laura, it's in Miami, and I guess it's not raining there. How are you, Laura? Ivancho, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking. I'm super happy. Miami is 85 degrees today, so it's really, really hot and humid. But, you know, we're having a good time, and we're so happy because we have an amazing guest. Someone that I'm sure you guys are going to be remembering uh, very soon. And we want to say hi from Cali, Colombia, Mr. Papadopoulos, Christopher Papadopoulos. How are you? I'm doing great, Laura and Ivan. It's wonderful to see you guys. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I know. I know. So tell us, Chris or Christopher, how, how do you like it to be called? Chris is fine. Chris, it's fine. Okay, perfect. Well, because Mr. Papadopoulos, yeah, but you know, we want to make it more, a little bit more intimate. So tell us, uh, why are you in Cali right now? You, you've been living in Colombia and what happened to you after you left school? Like, tell us about your life right now. Wow. It's, there's a, there's a long story. Yes. So basically, um, really, yeah, I stayed, I taught at the Bolivar for, for three years between 89 and 92. Only three and years? For, wow. Yes, only three years, but you know, ended up having friends of a lifetime, which is again, a compliment to the people of Colombia and Cali and the Bolivar. Uh, and I didn't come back for 15 years. I came back in 2007 because of one of your classmates or near classmates, uh, Catalina Forero. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In 2007 with Facebook, we connected and she said, come to Colombia. And I hadn't come in 15 years. And since 2007, I've been coming to Colombia every year or every other year at least. So it's been this um, second relationship with a country that feels like my segundo hogar. So it feels like my second home now. Now, where is home? Felt... Where do you go back to when home you're not in yes, Home technically still is just off the island of Montreal in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I've been basically avoiding my winters. <laughs> so it's been a good time to come to Colombia during my winters. As much as I love winter, it's just too long and too cold. And I was feeling that during this year, during the pandemic, yes, you know, be careful with travel, but I felt health wise and otherwise, it just, my instincts were saying, Chris, go anyway, you'd be better off going to Colombia. Uh, I usually go to Cali and Bogota where most of my friends are. Mm -hmm. um, but this time I started out the first few months in Colombia in Quindío and Santa Marta because oh, beautiful. Ba bajo in castles, low in cases, and I, you know, it's open air and nature. I was staying in like in this eco cabin away from everyone. So really enjoying uh, the beauty of Colombia, being by myself. And then just recently with, you know, some of the, 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 the relaxing of regulations, my friends inviting me uh, to Cali. That's uh, yeah, fantastic. I was telling Laura that you were in Santa Marta and that you were in Quindío and that we wanted to know why, uh, but now we know. So, but what, why are you so in love with Colombia? I mean, we're Colombian, so we know, but why are you so in love? <laughs> there's, there's just so many things. I mean, the, the original reason was just the beauty. I'm very attracted to the Andes Mountains. There's just something, a connection that I have with the Andes, so much so that the last year that I lived uh, uh, as a teacher here in 91, 92, I bought myself a Renault 18 or Renault 18, you know, that old classic car, <laughs> and, 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 and took a place up in Las Nieves de Saladito in the mountains above Cali. Um, and so that was my first connection. And it still is the nature, that just the, the natural beauty, you know, the, 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 the birds, the animals, the, the flowers, the trees, everything, the mountains. But of course, over the years, the people as well, just, Really, there's, there's a unique kind of intelligence that I cannot describe that Colombians have. There's um, a great kindness they have, and which is especially impressive because of the contrast. It's also a country with, a, you know, a, a very turbulent history. And, mm -hmm. and so one could assume, especially if you're an outsider and know nothing, just think that, you know, it's a place, well, it's a difficult place to live and maybe the people aren't so great, but no, they are. <laughs> They're oh, wonderful, wonderful people. And I really, I have on my Facebook more Colombian friends than Canadians. And it's not, too, it's not, not, a, not a, you know, a knock against my Canadian friends. It's just really a compliment about the Colombian people. So. We know you obviously as our teacher, but we want to know, did you continue teaching? I mean, are you still in that field or you decided to venture in, in like in another, in, in another aspect? Still teaching, but in a different way. In fact, when I returned in 2007, after 15 years, that 15 years was really, um, because I was a young teacher. I arrived in, in, in Cali teaching at the Bolivar. I was only 23 years old. Oh. So I was, uh, I was quite young. 
And so when I left at Wow, 26, that, you were that young? Yeah. Of course, when yeah. we're little, we <laughs> see the teachers like as the adult, but 23 was a really young age for you to start like being being a teacher, I guess. It was. In fact, you know, even going on, on the weekends, going out to some of the bars or the clubs here, I'd see seniors from the Bolivar there and I would be, befriend some of them. And it's a funny thing, you know, it's a casual thing, but it was kind of uh, interesting because I was so young. I could, they were still almost my contemporaries. It was very interesting. So when I left Colombia, um, that's really, it began actually in Cali and in my last year teaching at the Bolivar, I taught um, history and politics, and I, uh, and where I, I met Ivan as well, um, teaching history and politics and and, uh, and economics. And my goal was really to get you know the students to be really world aware, aware of their mm -hmm. place in the world, and and a lot of the injustices that are happening in the world as well. And when I was just lying up at night, up in my little uh, adobe uh, finca house in Las Nieves de Saladito, uh, just these sort of impulses and, in, and intuitions came to me that I need to keep working on myself mm -hmm. and sort of coming up with some kind of a, a soft meditation technique. I can't really describe it because it was very rudimentary at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, that carried on after I left Colombia. And in fact, for 15, I guess those 15 years, I'd become a spiritual seeker, as they call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Why are we here? Who are we, etc. And over those years, I actually became uh, a meditation and, and consciousness teacher and, and also uh, help people with stress and relaxation. And I even do that here when I'm in Cali and Bogota, I have clients and I do workshops and talks and retiros as well for people that are just uh, looking to find some peace. And you wrote some books, no? Yes, yes. And one particular called uh, Paz, Donde y Como Encontrarla, which, mm -hmm. uh, you can find it in in uh, in Colombia, but I am having trouble now in, uh, through Libreria Nacional to find it. So people are just picking it up on Amazon. Um, and in, in English, it's called Peace and Where to Find It. Uh, this was actually the inspiration for a lot of uh, a good chunk of my my spiritual journey was a spiritual teacher and is a spiritual teacher called Eckhart Tolle, that some people mm -hmm. know. Because even at the, you know, at uh, in Exito and Caruya at the front, they have books sometimes and you can see El Poder de la Hora <laughs> right at the front uh -huh. of the checkout. It's everywhere. Uh, so it's a very, fam very famous book. Well, he, he read my manuscript and liked it. And because of that, my book got published and he wrote the prologue over my book. So it was, it was really um, a, a wonderful connection to make. Um, so yes, yeah, so, uh, and I helped write another book uh, called The Awakened Company sort of greater consciousness and compassion and mindfulness in the business in the workplace and I'm actually since last year working on another book but now because mm -hmm. of the pandemic let's just say that presence consciousness intuition is saying stop because things are going to change some more so your book is going to change well, I think that's I have, so, I so, sorry Laura you have? I have a, sorry go ahead. no 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 go ahead go ahead <laughs> that I think I have a manuscript uh, from your book at home in Cali that you gave me several years ago. I think okay. I, you know, I think it's printed, you know, on on, on, on paper. Uh, and I think it, it was you who, who sent me that file. And I okay. think somewhere. So wonderful. Ivancho, yeah, you have a copy of one of the first manuscripts that could be very, <laughs> very good money in eBay. <laughs> I know. I, I love how you think, Laura. I love it. That's good. Grace, I have a question for you. I mean, obviously, we we loved, we, we each of us uh, have amazing memories at Colegio Olivar. Is there something in particular when you go back to those two to three years that you were a teacher that you really remember and you say, I remember this so vividly. I remember this time. I remember this person. Is there something you want to share with us? Yes, actually, the times that I could, for example, I would stay late sometimes because I'd be working with you, for example, because there'd be some musical or artistic performance on and it'd be after hours. Of course, I remember you, dear. Oh, my God, I love those. That's why, you know, it's the glitz and the glam for me after that. <laughs> and so the after hours at the school, um, just there's a special kind of quiet there. And it's not just because there are no kids yelling, it's actually the sound of children yelling and talking is a wonderful thing. But there's a special kind of quiet at the Bolivar with the, the soft sound of insects or birds because it is so full of nature. The, the natural setting of the Bolivar is such an important part of the soul of it. It's almost like when it gets quiet, you can reconnect with 
the living being that the Bolivar is in some ways. And then that kind of recharges you and connects you and takes you into the next day when you're then once again connecting with the kids. So it means the natural beauty of the place is, is, is quite, which is still that way to this day. It's very striking. Um, every year, at least once, uh, Dr. Nagy is very kind enough to let me enter and visit all of my friends. The, oh, the work, yeah. Some of the workers are still there that I've known for all these years and, and teachers. And even some of the teachers invite me to the class to teach uh, relaxation to the students and meditation. So, so it's kind of that nice. Is fan- I, that is fantastic yeah. with the people. We have been chatting, you know, for a couple of weeks. Everybody remembers a smell. Everybody remembers a sound. You mentioned the insects. I remember, yes. and I think, Ivancho, we, we spoke about it the other day, that there were the chicharras that were on the tree that usually they stopped there and then they were like, shedding or something and you could like get the little carcasses and you right. kind of like put them in your in your clothes so that's like a vivid memory i have about that how about food are you like big into food that you remember yes. something from our dear cafeteria you know what it's so simple but i really just love the simple pleasure of having the a, a brown the brownies which are still good to this day yes. after all these years and the platanos so you just put some some of the the, the, the what they put with chimichurri guacamole what would they put on yeah there? the green stuff oh, the green the green stuff and guacamole it's, it's, that simplicity was so good because it's also something that just didn't exist from where i'm from you you would mm-hmm. never um have that so that yeah, so it's a simple. I mean, I liked all of the food there, and even to this day, they still Cooch is still there, and her team, some of her team is still there, and remember me after all these years, which is really cool. And the food is still really good. Yeah. Nice to know you go back and you visit, and you still have friends, and obviously you connect with not only us, the students, but also the faculty. I'm sure Ivan yeah. wants to know much more about you know what was your time in Colegio Olivar. Uh, Uh, so so I want to know, I want to know, I didn't know you were French Canadian until five days ago, basically. I, I'm actually Anglo, I'm actually an Anglo Quebecer. So I am from the Quebec, ah. so in the French part of Canada, oui, je veux parler français, but I'm actually still Anglophone, I'm English. Yeah. Well, okay, let's rephrase it. I didn't know you were Canadian until recently. <laughs> I thought you were American. Okay. okay. So, so it was like, a, I, was, I was surprised that you were Canadian. I never knew when you were at school, but um. So uh, I want to know, like, why did you end up going to Bolivar? What was the, uh, who, who brought you there? Or how, how was the process or what happened? Interesting. Um, I really trust my intuition and my gut on things, even back then. Uh, I had studied some Latin American history and politics in university, and I was drawn to that more than the other things I was studying. And again, I guess just this connection with the, the geography that I'd never personally seen, I'd seen in movies or, or, or pictures. And what was happening at the time is I graduated in history with a degree in history and a degree in education. And there was only one place in all of Canada at that time where there would be uh, international teachers fairs. So the directors of schools, in this case, Dr. Felton, for example, Felton. Martin Felton, they would travel around recruiting teachers, new teachers. Teachers. And I didn't want to do whatever all of my other friends were doing, which were going to the big cities in Montreal, which is a good thing. But I wanted to mm-hmm. explore the world some more. And the one of the teachers uh, at the Bolivar, I'm trying to remember her name now, it's been so long, she brought up a little slide presentation and showed pictures of the school and the mountains, and I just fell in love right away. I had a meeting with Marty, but there were actually no positions at, at, for, for what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. As a little disappointing. I even had a meeting with Dr. Nagy at that time, who's the current director of the Bolivar, but he was the director of Cartagena back then. Oh, um, really? Again, no positions, but it turned out a position opened up a few months later, and I did a remote interview by phone, and I got the job, and I was so excited. So again, it was just um, this natural connection with the, the, the geography that I always had, even though I had never personally experienced it, and some of my studies as well. And seeing some pictures, I immediately fell in love and said, that's the place I want to go. Well, thank you for uh, believing in Colombia, because during those times, you know, it was a little bit difficult to, to be there. It's like if you call, they call you and they tell you that you're moving to Zimbabwe or something like that right now. You know, it's not. Colombia at that time was not like that appealing. But... No, it's true. And, and, and there was. There, there, and there were problems here, of course, during those times. There were, there were a lot of problems. However, I always said this, and it's true. 
I felt more pressure from those back at home in Canada than mm -hmm. the discomfort I felt being here. As much as there were some big challenges back then, it was the pressure because of they're so concerned because they're getting a very limited view of what was going on. And so they were obviously concerned for my safety, but uh, they didn't really, you know, they couldn't see the whole picture, but I was feeling pressure from them. Other interesting point, at the same time I was looking for this, this job, the job in Cali, I was also uh, just applying to different places, including Kuwait. And ironically, at that time, they ended up having the war and, and not Cali. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like to tell my parents, look, you, you wanted me to go to Kuwait because it was safer, but there's a war going on in the Gulf right now. It was much better to go to Colombia. So you never know. So you mentioned previously that you are with Maria El Pilar, right? That she uh, is a friend of yours. She's um, yes. a teacher also. She was a teacher also at, uh, at, at Bolivar, right? Yes. But who else are you in contact with? Like from the staff or from faculty? Well, uh, a few people, a few of your, few of your friends as well. But one in particular who's still teaching there is a music teacher, Julian Agudelo, who I'm going to see in mm -hmm. actually just a few hours from now. We're all going to get together finally. I haven't, I've been here for a few weeks. I haven't seen her yet. She came into the school in 89, just like Pilar did and just like I did. So uh, I've um, known them all these years. But again, mm -hmm. since coming back, we've rekindled, rekindled the, the friendship. So I'm looking forward to seeing her. Uh, I always drop by, for example, and see Patricia Nasser up in administration mm -hmm. because she was in your she was in your class, I think, yes. when when I was teaching you guys, mm -hmm. and uh, she's become a, a, a good friend. So uh, I always try to drop by. I always see Marcela Castro, who's teaching art and now is teaching some meditation. And so over the past few years, I would we would work together to come up with some ideas uh, for her to help push the idea of bringing some form of self-awareness classes or, or even something so meditation. important for school it totally is and, and it's important i'm glad that the school is seeing that because actually it's taking off around the world people are realizing that kids of all ages need this as a, uh, to help them you know reduce the stress and actually improve their mental efficiency and emotional mm -hmm. resilience so oh um i'm trying to think who else um uh but still some of the staff are still there I walked by because I'm really I'm staying in Wanambu with with uh, Pilar Angel, who who by the way is in the other room right now doing Zoom conferences with students and teachers at for the Bolivar. So you're having a real live Colegio Bolivar experience right now. Yay! And I walked down the hill in Wanambu and past the resident the Hotel Stein, which you all is a, is a landmark in Cali. And I looked through the gate and looking up to the stairs and on those steps. It, there, I have an old photo somewhere, I don't know where it is, but it's an actual physical photo, it's so old, um, of uh, a group of us who came down that very first day to Cali. And one of the people in the photograph is Tom Romp, because I came down on the plane oh, with him. Mr. Romp, my Mr. English teacher. Romp. So Mr. Romp and I came down on the same plane, we arrived the same time to Cali as well. So, well, of course, when I go to visit the Bolivar, I always visit the, the, the folks that live at the work at the library. I was, to Liz Aguado and the mm -hmm. others, um, and of course, Tom Rumpf, so. You love now it, you I love it. You know what? I didn't know, and I think now as an adult, of course, I, it had to be that way. I had no idea that Dr. Felton was like shopping around teachers all around the world and yeah. getting like the best staff because Ivan uh, and I had discussed it over and over. I think the attachment and the value that we give our teachers now as adults, it's incredible. Either they help okay. you with maybe something that you apply right now at your job, or they get you that skill, like you mentioned, to see the world and have like an open view about what everything, how things are happening. It opens our, our, our mind and it's thanks to you and thanks to those teachers that I guess were selectively chosen by Dr. Felton and I applaud that time that he, you know, gave each and every one of you, and obviously now the opportunity for us and for all of the kids that came after. Wonderful, it's, it's true. There's some really um, <clears throat> unique personalities that come, and that, which is important. I mean, Martin, Martin was good at picking <clears throat> not just good teachers that have to obviously, you know, uh, be able to fulfill the, the curricular requirements, mm -hmm. but some unique personalities and characters as well too. So that, that brings a different kind of exposure to the, to the students and to the school to have some people with different uh, personality characteristics and, and, and gifts and things like that. Yeah. 
So I remember we were in a musical together called SQP or Salvese Quien Pueda. It was <laughs> sort right. of a musical and not a musical. And it was like, it, like, it was like a weird time. I don't know why Mr. Palencia, I think it was him who yes. did it. And, and it was incredible. And we uh, did like three shows in the uh, Teatro Jorge Sachs, maybe. And I remember, Hello. I remember you were in the on the show with me. And, uh, I don't remember your character, but I do remember uh, going there and the rehearsals and all that good time. So for me, it was an excellent experience to to be there and to be with my teachers. You, I think you were not my teacher anymore during that year, but you have been my teacher the previous year. But it was an yes. amazing experience. Do you remember that time? I absolutely do, and I'd forgotten it till this moment because I was thinking, of course, of all the other things we did in house at the school. But I absolutely remember that. Yes, and I played a, um, I guess, what's the, the famous, the famous, is there a small role there from the, um, from Cabaret, the, the uh, Gray, what's his name, Joel Gray character? Uh, from okay. Cabaret, so I was playing that. I forgot that you were in it, but now I remember, of course, because you have a beard, so I can't, I can picture the young Yvonne face. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that was a lot of fun. It was, yeah, I was helping um, John Palencia with, organizing it and, and creating it and uh and then i wanted to, i wanted to be on the stage i wanted to have some fun so it was a good and i forgot that ivan you were in that too yeah it was a lot it was a crazy thing but it was a lot of fun like i was i was in colombia uh, during december uh during christmas and i found the billboard and i have it i have a picture of it wow. i'll send it to you i yeah. thank you wonderful yeah, it was there are so so very nice memories that usually come up from you know uh, these conversations and and we love connecting with 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 our teachers and with our other fellow students that are doing like great all around the world i mean i'm class of 95 Ivancho is class of 93 93 i mean uh, the idea uh, is to connect and obviously to talk a little bit about you uh, talk a little bit about what happened at those times at Colegio Oliver and obviously, you know, make it a conversation between friends. That's why the show is called Entre Amigos. So That's we're nice. super happy to have you here. And we have a section uh, in our program where we do like little fast, uh, short questions for short answers. Are you up okay. to it? Let's try see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you. Fantastico. Chris, how do you start your day? Um, opening the eyes and uh, feeling my body, feeling the sensations of the body and deeper what you can call the energy field of the body, if you will, to kind of just kind of um, recharge that or connect with that because that feeling of the energy field of the body kind of anchors me for the rest of the day so that I can go out and do what everyone else does but still feel something more subtle and deep to kind of... Um, keep me anchored in the here and now, we can say. And how do you end your day? I imagine it's all of that, but backwards? <laughs> ex exact, ex exactly, absolutely. Although I have to admit during the pandemic, I'm watching, I never have Netflix and now I'm watching some Netflix stuff late at night. I make sure to turn it off beforehand because I don't want it to be the technology to be the last thing that I do before I go to bed. I uh, usually solve, sometimes there's some, some, some Netflix, uh, I'll do some readings. Uh, sometime, mm -hmm. Last night I stayed up late because I had another writing burst, some insights. So spend uh, like till two o'clock in the morning writing down some things that may end up in the book in the future. And uh, but then, yes, it's, it's just a, a winding down where I just feel the, relax the body and start feeling the energy field and, and deepening the sense of consciousness. We can call it mm -hmm. just being very aware of awareness itself. Mentioning Netflix, any series that really has you hooked up? Or something that you said, oh my God, I discovered this and I'm like hooked to it. I, I did see just recently that, so was it My Octopus Teacher, that documentary mm -hmm. film on uh, that, that's beautiful. It's very touching. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy that. And I had to see the other things I've been doing though on Netflix. Uh, I haven't been getting into the dramas. I just want sometimes something just to laugh. And so Brooklyn mm -hmm. Nine-Nine has -Nine, mm -hmm. been on for a number of years because it's just silly makes me laugh and that's a good thing so i've been watching some episodes of that just to laugh laughter is definitely uh, something that you know it's it's like therapy it's therapeutic yes um, yeah. and i wanna uh, my, uh, one of my other question is uh, what makes you feel safe what makes me feel safe interesting 
guess the, the simplest answer is this state of presence that basically mm -hmm. is my majority experience by a lot, which is what part of the, the book that eventually will come out, who knows how long and what I'm teaching now is I'm getting back to after years of teaching the esoteric aspects of consciousness and duality and non-duality and all of these things. Uh, biologically, we just want to feel safe. And when we are compulsively chattering in the head all the time, the body is still here in the present moment and it produces feelings of unease to tell signals to the head to come back to the present moment where we can kind of relax and feel safe. So any techniques we can use to kind of quiet the mind and relax the muscles, so there's a relaxed alertness, that is a signal to the body. Or for example, having our exhalations longer than our inhalations are signals biologically to the body that you're safe and you can Ivan relax. Ivan knows a lot about that. He, he, he got me into yoga many, many years ago. I, and I yes. know it's all about the breathing technique and yes. how to wind down, obviously. We work in, in my field of, of work. I'm always like on the go, stressed, sure. having a thousand things in my mind. So I'm, I'm definitely going to think about the relaxation and the breathing and all of that. You want to do well, continue? Okay. I'm a yoga instructor, but I don't teach, unfortunately, anymore. Um, I don't have time for that. I prefer doing Zooms with my friends and with my teachers. This is, <laughs> it, makes feel, it makes me feel safe and it makes me feel better. So what's your inspiration or who is your inspiration? One of my first inspirations who hasn't been with us for a while was my father. He's a truly super, super intelligent man, but more than that, he had a very big heart. He's a really decent, kind person. So he's always that kind of like a, a role model for me. Um, and what inspires me now is anything that expresses goodness and kindness anytime i can mm -hmm. sense it or feel it uh that inspires me so what are you missing in your life from doing question let's see now during pandemia be... or like thinking ah. more that could be a tricky question i miss going out to bars but that's not <laughs> like my life like motivation or something like that yeah yeah, that, that's true. The pandemic, I mean, we're social beings. We're designed to connect and it'd be nice to talk to a lot more people. I've been going out a little bit carefully, but it'd be nice to hug more people and, and mm -hmm. spend more time uh, with people. That would be really nice. I guess in general, it would be nice to do a little more traveling as well. Part mm -hmm. of what my impulse to do is kind of a world service. It's kind of like a calling. I love what I'm experiencing and I want to share that with others. Basically my priority is to alleviate suffering as much as possible. And so it's, and I would like to take that energy and that message out to more people, but obviously sometimes it's, um, it could be uh, situations back at home that prevent me or sometimes it's finances or sometimes it's a pandemic. And so, mm -hmm. but it's nothing that uh, is holding me back too much. I don't have any big, stress or regrets about it just things that would be preferably nice to happen if they could so you mentioned traveling where where do where you like to go i'd actually like to see more of colombia there's still so much i haven't seen i've seen a fair amount but still there's always more because it's just this big crumpled up piece of paper you can say because it's got it's, it's really a massive land mass if it was flattened out and, and every in all these little pockets between mountains and, and rivers and valleys, there's different cultures and different geographical, uh, unique uh, environments. I would love to see more of that. I'd love to see more of South America. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to spend. I haven't. I've really actually have spent too little too little time in Europe. I'd like to spend more time in Europe, but and of course everything else, Africa, Asia, Southeast Asia no experience there would love to so really to really spread out the travels and, and do a lot more of it would be nice what's your favorite uh movie oh, question. for a quick answer ay, 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 ay. <laughs> that's this is the whole thing you know quick answers make you like wow i i don't have an answer right now but yeah, that, that's a good one it's, it's funny because there there, there are a, a few of them and it always changes it, it's like one of them now, which wouldn't, I wouldn't say my all-time favorite movie, but one that really just has been coming up lately is a movie called Run, Lola, Run. Yeah, I love it. Was it. A, it's a great movie. And basically why it's speaking to me more is because 
you, you begin to see that there are archetypes in the movie that in fact, the woman character is not just a story about a woman saving her boyfriend. And his name's Manny, the man. It's a woman saving mankind. So there's a meta metaphor for, for the feminine side of us in a, in a sense, our spiritual mm -hmm. side, our evolved uh, consciousness side, saving humanity from itself and, and in the suffering. So when I see that movie now, I get very teary eyed thinking of this wonderful woman saving into all of humanity. <laughs> Who's your favorite artist? Good question. Another good question. I, I give me. I'll get back to you on that one. I have to think of that because I'm thinking musicians, and it, and it's <laughs> it can be anything. It can be anything. It can be Botero. It can be Rayo. Chris, I, don't know. I imagine that by then, now being like half Colombian, half Canadian, you already know how to dance salsa, right? I. But you know what? I've forgotten the little half step there. I I'm half in between yes and no now, so I have to get it back. I, I really want to get it back because I really enjoy it. But I have to admit major that goal for 2021. There you go. <laughs> And now you're in the capital of the salsa, so you can do it there. You know? Exactly, that's right. So I just have to, you know, try to do it in a, in a socially distanced, safe way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so dry eraser or chalk? Good question. I prefer chalk, actually. You're old school. The old school. <laughs> you're old school. <laughs> that's, that's the reason. Like people, that, my, my nephews, they don't know anything about chalk. They're like, chalk, what's that? Anyway, so uh name three things that you cannot live without three things this question sounds better in english than in spanish right laura in totally. spanish we can never do it <laughs> we could never get through this question when we're uh, doing the yeah. interview in spanish honestly i i uh, forgive me for being so basic but it really gets back to um I said, well, my answer is I cannot live without chapstick. So yeah, I know. Honestly, that's what I was thinking. Objects, I'm good with without phones. Objects, I can literally stare at a wall and I'm fine. So water, fresh air, and frequent moments of quiet. Sounds perfect. That sounds amazing. Listen, going back to uh, when you said that you want to go to school and teach a little bit of yoga, meditation, and things like that, I have to tell you that my first uh, contact with that was with Miss Green, biology teacher, and she used to she used to make us uh, lay down on the floor or in the I don't know if you remember that the, there were like some uh, tables, like huge uh, yes I don't know, tables. Uh, and we used to lay, lay down there and she used to do all this beautiful meditation. And that was my, like my first thing. And I remember, I still remember uh, that. And like I said, I, I'm a yoga instructor. I do yoga Wonderful. every single morning. I meditate, you know, I've been to India, I've been many things, you know, I'm in contact in that, in that sense, but that's a great thing for kids. Like I, I, I think that uh, you start appreciating those things. When I studied also theater or drama in, in Bogota, we used to do transcendental, transcendental, transcendental meditation, meditation transcendental, mm -hmm. and that gave me a lot of uh, things also. So that's a very good idea. Very happy. The world, if anything, what the pandemic is teaching a lot of people in the world is that they, they never had the internal resources to handle something like this. Mm -hmm. They may be, you know, not have, maybe not sick, maybe just living in their houses and things aren't great, but they're not terrible and they're still suffering or they're getting depressed because they weren't aware that like everyone else that they were relying on external things to kind of depressurize or calm down or distract them, which mm -hmm. is fine, but that they had never developed any internal resources to handle this. And now some of them are realizing I need more resources, maybe internal resources like things like yoga or meditation. Uh, there are a variety of things to kind of cope and deal with uh, situations like this. Exactly. Well, I have two last questions about the quick questions. And okay. one is going to be in Spanish. ¿Cuál es la canción en español que te sabes la letra? ¿Cuál canta en español? Pues mira, es, a veces yo conozco algunas palabras de um, Cielito, Cielito Lindo. Cielito Lindo. A veces. Si sí estoy cantando con alguien, una parte sí. Y hay que lástima porque lastimosamente y es típicamente solo 
algunas frases, pero en inglés también. Yo conozco muchas canciones, pero solo como parágrafos o, 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 fra o frases. Y canción entero, yo creo que no, pero un poquito de estilo tío lindo. Y qué más? I think something from Soda Stereo, maybe? Mm, of course. No, pa no? Palabri palabritas, pero no, no creo que. I always, no change, que I always change the lyrics of every single song. So, <laughs> listen, so last question. This one is going to be in, in, in English or in Spanish. Okay. What's your hidden talent? My hidden talent. Talento oculto. I mean, I've seen you teaching. I've seen you acting. Um, I like singing. I don't, know if it's a, I don't know if it's a hidden talent. I, I'm not a great you singer. You look like I, a singer. I, I love singing. But he doesn't um, know the lyrics. <laughs> that's right. Doesn't Don't know the lyrics, but I love singing. And um, I don't know if it's a hidden talent, but I guess um, I'm good at connecting with people and, and seeing them for who they are and making them feel reassured safe you have you have more friends than i uh, from from cali on your facebook so <laughs> i'm going to request you in my facebook chris because please I think it was please do fantastic to, to connect with you i mean it i've been wonderful. telling ivan that i'm very bad with my memory i do remember names but once i see faces i immediately clicked yeah and i was like googling you and like oh. stalking you in facebook and i'm like Oh my God, he's still as handsome as I remember him. Oh, I'm gonna so be nice. so happy speaking to, to, to you this day, and, been... and we were delighted to have you. Thank you, Laura. And Ivan, Monet, and Peter Gabriel, the two, oh, two wow. artists that, nice. that come to me. We're there, you were there thinking, huh? They were there. <laughs> That's good, they're good, they're good. I love it. So Chris, anything else you want to share with us before we said goodbye? Unfortunately, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a show and it has to end, but, uh, but what else do you want to share with us? I just want to say it's really, Yvonne and Laura, really wonderful just to see you guys again. I'm so happy that you guys are, look happy and healthy. It's the most important thing and you're thriving. Uh, so much of the world, even before the pandemic was just survive in survival mode and we can't really be our full potential if we're just always just in survival mode. So everyone out there too, who's, who's watching this, I hope you're happy and healthy. And I recommend a little quick technique you can do all day. Check for unnecessary muscle tension all day and relax your muscles, whether it's bringing your shoulders down or removing your tongue from the roof, roof of your mouth or relaxing the jaw, mm -hmm. deepening your breath, unclenching your hands and feet because that unnecessary muscle tension is fuel for the head to keep chattering and therefore for your emotional reactivity to keep going on for your body to keep reacting emotionally. And when you inhale deeply, when you remember to have your exhale longer than your inhale, that's a signal biologically to enter the parasympathetic nervous system. And even the, let me say the, the more positive or calming side of the parasympathetic nervous system to calm us down because I want everyone out there to survive the pandemic and Uh, to not suffer and stress out so much. Lovely. Thank you for your kind words. I'm sure they'll, they're going to mean a lot You're to welcome. everyone who's listening at the other side. Thank you, Chris, for being here today. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy that you're in Cali. Uh, we miss being in Cali. I'm in New York. It's raining. It's cold. Laura is in Miami. We, you know, we love Cali. We oh, love I Colegio Bolívar. We love our teachers. We love our our friends and um i hope to see you soon in person yes uh, absolutely. and to the rest of the guys watching right now thank you very much for joining us today this is entre amigos and we'll see you very soon fantastic gracias